Hello and welcome to That Is Nice Podcast, pal. Pal is one of those words that if, no matter how you say it, it's going to sound aggressive. You know, if you, 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 hey, what's up, pal? How's it going, pal? It sounds like, you, it sounds like you're interrogating somebody. How you doing, pal? It just doesn't. It doesn't work. You can't say it much. But yes, all right. So some new, some new updates. This guy over here in the background. Indeed, I did get a haircut, and I saved twenty dollars doing it. Not from a sponsor. I did it myself. I was sick of the whole homeless look. It was touching my ears. People were starting to just throw change at me when I walked down the road. So I just did it myself. I tucked the ambition, or I had the ambition, and I did it myself. And I didn't have my mom do it because then I would have the same haircut that everybody had from 2008 to 2011. And there were two types of haircuts in 2008 to 2011. And I don't need to tell you what they are because a boy had one haircut and a girl had another haircut. And it was like living in North Korea. My girlfriend and I talked about this. And we talked, she, she's from Puerto Rico. I'm from Nigeria, obviously. And uh, everybody she knew had the same haircut. Everybody I knew had the same haircut. She had it, I had it. I didn't let my mom do it because I didn't want the bull cut. And girls had bangs. We know this. And let's see what else. We're also talking like things that used to be cool. We were talking about what is the goofiest time period for the way people dressed. You know, you think the 80s? Maybe Victorian times? We both agreed that it was 2008 through 2011. So most of the listeners can relate to this. This is because in the eight, we agreed that in the 80s, Everything just looked terrible. You know, you, your pants looked terrible, and your shirt looked terrible, and as well did your hair it also looked terrible. But in 2008 to 2011, in those years, you would have, like, tight pants on with Osiris's, which if you don't remember Osiris's, they were the shoes that were, like, moon boots. They were massive. And then everyone just had the same haircut. And you'd have like a DC shirt on or something. Just nothing matched. Like at least in the 80s, everything was terrible. But in those years, 2008 to 2011, everything was just kind of just whatever. You know, and you might sprinkle a little cherry on top. You might throw a few silly bands on just to really separate yourself from the crowd. And I was going to put on a shirt before this. I usually wear like dress shirts, but I didn't this time because I realized that this dress shirt, I was skeptical because I overthought it and I had the two pockets right here. And I, I realized I was conscious. I thought to myself like, oh, wait, that's my it's cold out dress shirt because it, these pockets right here that nobody uses, these two square pockets on a flannel shirt that no one uses and I don't see the purpose for. Those are for covering your cold nips. It's a little secret. Those are for covering nips if it's cold outside. That's why you don't see them on... Maybe you do see them on tank tops, but they only got one. Most people I know... Most most people I know have two. Two nips. So one pocket's just a fashion accessory. Two pockets is functional. It's form over function. They have a function, and that function is to make sure that you're not poking through. And it's warm out, so I I felt no necessity to have the nip protectors. All right, so some news that happened this weekend was there was a man who lit himself on fire outside of the White House. And if you're thinking what I'm thinking... It's probably not much. To light yourself on fire. What is that? 
Is that is that a protest? Is that I mean, what else what could it be? If a protest. Okay, you lit yourself on fire. If I was being protested, say there's 15 people protesting outside of my house in Nigeria, and all 15 of them light themselves on fire, I would be happy because they solve my own problem. My problem was there's people yelling outside of my house. And they solved it themselves. They lit themselves on fire. Like, how does that make anybody see your point more? Lighting yourself on fire. And how do you think that's a great idea? You go, you know what? I'm gonna really, I'm gonna really stick it to him this time. I'm gonna really, I'm gonna really show him what's up. I'm gonna light myself on fire. Huh? Uh, uh, huh? Uh, okay. Mm, you got your own problems there. You're not showing anybody nothing. I want to be less involved with your side if people on your side are lighting themselves on fire. Huh? But these are the things you probably think about as you're on fire. He was, I don't know what he was... I don't even know if he was protesting. I, maybe he was just bored. He could have just been bored. <laughs> he might have just been a little bored and decided that it was a good idea to light himself on fire. Maybe he was embarrassed because he wasn't wearing the two-pocketed nip shirt. And uh, he was trying to heat himself up a little bit. But to light yourself on fire... By the way, for all the new subscribers, I should tell you a little bit something about myself. And myself is I've never had that urge to light myself on fire. I guess I just don't believe in anything strong enough. I've listened to some tracks. I've listened to some dope diss tracks in my time. Some very dope diss tracks, and they were fire. Didn't spontaneously combust, but they were fire, man. They were fire. They were fire. So that happens. So don't do that. Protest other ways. There's better ways to do it. That's probably the least efficient way. Uh, and then we have Julian Assange. Julian Assange got arrested or detained, whatever you want to call it. I'll call it arrested because it looked like he was getting arrested to me from the embassy. And he's been there for seven years. And I, it sucks. Yeah. WikiLeaks. They're, you know, they leaked a lot of information, but there were some, they, they kicked him out because the stuff like, you know, he was like letting his cat defecate anywhere. And he would, you know, like here, I found this video. I'm just going to show you in case you haven't seen it. And he would like keep in, keep in mind that this is the man who would like politicians and powerful governments were afraid of because he had all their information. And he was going to leak it. He was like this notorious hacker and, just watch and keep those things in mind. He's in his boxes. He's in his boxes. <laughs> He's skateboarding. This is Julian Assange. Assange. People are afraid of him, you know? Rightfully so. Just skating. Just scooting. Just scooting around. Julian Assange just scooting around in his underwear and a tank top, not giving a, a frick. He doesn't give a frick. And then, ba -bo -ba 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 -da, Michael Aventi. Or Avenatti, whatever his name is. Aventi sounds better to me, but his last is parents decided to take the name Avenatti. That was their second biggest mistake after the conception. But, uh, yeah, so he, he, uh, he was charged with fraud, perjury, embezzlement, and failure to pay taxes. And this man was fighting for the people. What a, it's just, it's just so funny because like, remember, 
like Fox would have like, oh, creepy porn lawyer. And you'd be like, I'm not a creepy porn lawyer. And then, you know, he was a lot worse than a creepy porn lawyer. He even went as far as to hide a $4 million settlement settlement from a paraplegic man that he funneled into his race car and coffee business because they were failing. Man, what a... I don't know. What a freaking jerk, dude. This guy, you could tell he was a sleaze bag just by looking at him. And I, I'm not going to try to, I've been trying to get less political, but what a sleaze bag, dude. He was going to run for president. Mm. But it was sweet, sweet victory. Like when I heard that, this is what, when I, when I heard this news, this is what came to mind. I don't know if you know this song, but we're going to cue the song. So just look. <laughs> And then right there, okay, so right. Now just imagine him and everything, just a clip of him talking like, oh, the president's always oh, corrupt, he's bad, he's this, uh, da, 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 Michael Aventi, yeah, uh, bald. Talking all that smack. And then like this. This is, I'm Michael Aventi right now. And also he's got all his money and he's walking around with his briefcase. And then it's just, oh, oh. I'm trying not to swear so I don't mess with the other. That oh crap moment. I'm more annoyed that I can't swear, but that oh crap moment. That's Michael Venny right there. Baby. Get out of here. But yeah, some other news. We're just throwing the news at you of the last week. Keep you in the loop. And then the first image of the black hole came. And uh, I didn't even know I needed one. I thought we already had these. Nolan, the guy who was actually on here quite often, notorious guest Nolan, he sent me a link saying, oh, yeah, tomorrow they're releasing the first black hole. So I, I went and I tuned in and I watched, and I was so disappointed, man. That's not, like, I was like, ah, I wish you'd never told me, you know. It's like you ruined it because I, the other ones look cooler. This was just an orange ring. You couldn't even tell what it, it could have been anything. It could have been someone taking a picture of, like, a headlight at night. Could have been a headlight that somebody took a photo of, like, really far away. Like, I wasn't impressed. Not impressed, but depressed. But, yeah. Good. I don't want to make this one too long, so I'm jumping into another one. This is pretty off the top of the dome for the most part. I don't really have a lot of notes, so I'm going for it. I shouldn't say that because it's a podcast and I'm trying to be professional. But here it is. Something really funny that occurred to me that I remembered from my childhood was like uh, we had like one dog when I was growing up and my parents got rid of it and they just never wanted a dog. I convinced them to get a dog. We finally got one and it didn't really last, not even six months. And uh, I remember one time my little sister was telling a story. It was like a little family dinner we had. And uh, we were talking about pets and like someone said how, yeah, I always had a pet growing up. And then uh, Alicia was saying how she used to, my sister was saying how she used to have cats and everything when she was growing up. This is before we were born. Talking about how my mom and, you know, they used to always allow pets until like Brynn and I were the ones in the house for some reason. And uh, when Alicia goes, (laughs) when Alicia goes, yeah, my mom, we always had cats growing up. And then Brianna was like, what? Mom only let me play with the stray cat that used to come up to the porch. Because <laughs> it is true, too. There was a stray cat that used to come up to our porch. And Brianna, my mom, my mom would allow Brianna to pet it for a little bit. And uh, that's just that. I guess. So there's a little bit of a podcast that I threw together for you folks. What is this? Episode 40 something. That's all. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and check us out on Instagram. The link is right here. Very nice. Very nice. Boom. Don't forget to click on that. And tune in. There's going to be another one coming out Wednesday. That one will be a little bit more in depth. Possibly an interview. We'll see. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching.
This was That Is a Nice Podcast. Have a good day, evening, morning, night. Adios, mi amigos. Oh, <laughs>